Hey everybody, this is Vince Gilligan, executive producer of Better Call Saul, and you're here watching episode 306, entitled Off Brand. And I'm Keith Gordon, I directed this episode. And I'm uh, Nick Forshager, I was the sound supervisor. And I'm Larry Benjamin, re-recording mixer. Uh, I'm Ann Cherkis, I wrote the episode. And Patrick Fabian, who plays Howard Hammond, sitting here as well. And sadly, that's all we have time for. So, <laughs> thank you, everybody. That was that was our longest introduction ever. <laughs> there he is. There's my boyfriend, <laughs> Michael Mando, <laughs> counting money, just what he wants to do. <laughs> this is a tough-looking uh, individual. This fellow here, good casting. Well, actually, you know, that guy. There's a you know, well. And you wanted to talk oh, about him? Yeah, no, we. I remember sitting in on the casting session, and and he was a former gang member, and uh, he was so yeah, he was this guy. Oh, yeah, and now he was this guy. Right. And now he sort of found God, and he rebuilt his life. He's nice. very. He's a very touching guy. I mean, he was. I, I wish we had more for him to do. Me too. Because he Me was too. so sweet and so good and so wanted to do good. I mean, just one of those people you just wanted a hug, and I was so happy we yeah, found him. Yeah, he was so nice, and he, he was job. so grateful. It yeah. was wonderful to meet him. Well, he's not dead, so... That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is good to know. I, yeah. I, I was joking on the last one of these auto commentaries uh, when I said uh, but I, I learned something on every one of these things. It's good to know that. We, there's no reason we couldn't bring him yeah. back. Yeah. The whole fun in this scene that, and, and, and you really set up in the script was, is, is you've got these layers of the three of them, you know, and and that that basically Michael Mando is always under pressure, even even when you know when when uh, Mark Margolis is sort of soft in the background, or whatever. He's always his presence looming, okay. and that was actually something you you good? set up in the writing, and it was really fun to be able to shoot it because really the scene's dominated by somebody that you don't look at very much, which is is for directors a fun thing to work with, and that was something I really liked and appreciated in the way you set up the the physics of the scene. I love your shot. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was yeah. going to say he is this this looming presence, and uh, everyone who comes in and out defers to him and bows to him. And yeah. I, and I love how Keith, how you stacked them all up here, and you have the varying levels of focus, all the way to the the fellow in the back. We love uh, the 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 cook, but uh, I, it's that was great how you did this. Well, again, I feel like it felt like it was sort of implied in the way it was written. You know, I mean, one of the things when you come into TV like this and this kind of television is the writing is at an extremely high level. So a lot of what you're doing in the brief prep time you have is sort of trying to read into the subtext of what's already been written really well and just find ways to visually underline it and feed it. But, you know, you're not really creating it. It's it's The writing is great. It's there. And there were certainly references to the fact that the fact that that uh, that Mark's character is only reading the newspaper, he's never looking up, he's never, you know, and that sort of implied to me a certain kind of power without even needing to exercise it, and that 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 then influences the shots. Nice. But this moment then coming up when he speaks, oh yeah, is so it's a pit in the stomach yeah. to watch because yeah. you're like, oh, Nacho actually was doing a the solid by his friend, and mm -hmm. now I don't know what's going to happen, but it's not oh, going to yeah. be good, right? Yeah. And Michael does such a great job of just conveying that on his face. Yeah. Talk about some great actors in this scene. And Max Arciniego, always great seeing Max again, who dates back to the very first episode mm. of Breaking Bad. I love it how Mark never takes his eyes off the paper. Yeah. He's always listening. The yeah. tension's there. That didn't look up. That ain't worth his time to look up. I love how you did that, how you guys did that. But I love this shot. This is a nice angle. No, no I'm sorry. I love that. I love it. Just yeah, I like. I love it. This was again was something that Anne had written. The idea of just looking at, you know, watching Mark and not watching the beating. You know, was to me in some ways more powerful yeah. than going and seeing somebody getting beat up. And the fact that even here it's sort of this obscure background piece. Wonderfully done. So how tricky is this? Uh, I love. Uh, how did the, how'd you guys do this thing with the with the needle through the hand coming it, up? It was not easy, and in fact, I didn't do the final shot that's in the show because when I was there on the day, we couldn't get it to work. Oh man, and so really? I have to tip my hat to Peter, who actually right. came in and oh, did the reshoot. He of it did a reshoot because we never could quite get it to work. Oh, that's okay. Hence, ha quite how tricky it okay, was. Okay, yeah. Uh, it was a piece of uh, there was a piece of uh, prosthetic 
uh, flesh that was carefully hidden. Okay. And basically, the needle had to already be in for the shot where it comes out, mm -hmm. and then come out believably. And when I was there, for some reason, it never it it came out wrong. It just right. it, it, yeah, it yeah. didn't it looked like it was plastic. It didn't look like gotcha. Um, there had been a makeup test which looked amazing, and then somehow on the day it just and on a TV schedule we just ran out of time, sure. and and so Peter went back and got that for me, which I'm very grateful for because gotcha. it looks great now. Well. So, uh, Patrick, why couldn't your boy Mando just do it for real? Take well, for no, I, I, I asked him <laughs> that. I said, you're, you're so I tough on the show. Would have if we had asked him. I mean, like, I understand if Hamlin would, would say, like, no, I'm not going to do that. But Mando, he's all Mr. Tough Guy. <laughs> oh, let's see how tough you are. Oh, that's yeah. painful. That's awful. That's awful. <laughs> it's also, like, the, the sound and it just with the skin. Yeah, what did you guys do, yeah, do for that? what did you do for the sound there? We did a lot of different little things. Actually, the lead-up to that was a lot of fun because the sewing machine was supposed to, be, supposed to be this tension. Yeah. And we wanted to build this cacophony of sound to this moment where it stops. And we ended up going back and adding, like, machine guns on top of it. Nice. Yes. So it was these kind cool. of machine gun kind of bolts kind of hitting nice. to build up the kind of tension. Very cool. Nice. And then the sound of it just kind of hitting was just a little bit of flesh thing. But the one thing that I was my favorite was as it pulls away, there's a little snap, a little like a little separation skin of snap skin. that kind of yeah. snaps back as it goes back in. Yeah, it really sounds We like actually didn't played it down a little bit because we wanted to really stay with uh, Nacho on it, but it was really a lot of fun. It was effective, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful uh, sound editing and mixing. Oh, for sure. Talk about the difference real quick. What's the, what, what do each of you do? So uh, Nick prepares us with all the elements, provides everything that we have uh, on the palette, all the, the dialogue, the sound effects, the foley, the backgrounds, the, the tapestry of sound, and then it's our job, my mix partner Kevin Valentine and myself, blend all those elements together, kind of funnel them down into the soundtrack that you hear. Get all sure. the volumes precisely where yes. you want and to a minute, minute degree. Yes, yeah. exactly. Nice. And the level of detail is the same as every other decision that you guys talk about, the props and costuming and such, and writing, of course. I wish people watching this show could uh, attend a mix. First of all, because you're never going to hear it sound quite as good as on that mix stage. Right. And secondly, because, yeah, seeing all the, all the little... A little fiddle fucking with the tiny little, <laughs> all the different, you know, putting a machine gun into a sewing machine. Yeah, I love sure. it. And how much that does psychologically for an audience. Yeah, it's for sure. amazing. Yeah. You know, the people. Absolutely. There's a whole subliminal world that you guys create that's, boy, does it make a difference. Well, it's, it's great. You guys give us that freedom and that, that latitude, which is wonderful. Yeah. Kind of helps juice up the acting for guys like this here. <laughs> Oh, I need every piece of sound I can hear. <laughs> I, I think we can agree on that. No, <laughs> you're fantastic. I've got suits and sound. Other than that, I'm, 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 I'm a wash. I'm a drift. He forced his way into his brother's house, and he is deeply sorry. But it also goes back to what you were saying about, you know, the, it's set up in the writing. It's also set up in the directing for us. Yeah. You know, we look for those little nuances that we can then add on top of that to kind of bring those things out. Even when you have a scene where it's just maybe the two of them sitting there talking, you want to build that tension. Sometimes it's maybe uh, increasing the music a little bit to give it a little more tension. Or maybe it's using, in that scene, you know, we had the fryer going and stuff like that. So you use those kind of elements to kind of help build it up in a subtle way where it doesn't step on anything. So it, it's a... It's a uh, it's a always a build when you're when you're trying to and do it. It seems like as a fan, and and maybe I'm, you know that as a fan of the show watching, that you guys use atmosphere a lot. Yeah, you know, the, for sure. I mean, almost every place that we're in, every location, has got sounds. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, has got things that are very alive on that track, and that's not something that every show bothers to do. But I feel right. like it's part of what makes this feel very alive. Yes, you're, you're absolutely right. The environment is something that we focus yeah. a lot on. Well, I always think of them as characters, right? So they're going to, what, what can this character of this location bring to the story? Um, you know, some are kind of established and, and you, you stay with it. But when you established it, like this office or the, the HHM office, you know, they, they were trying to say something about the story itself. Uh, either as a contrast to who the player, to the, the character or to the story so you, you're looking for those as to be characters so you're always looking for nuances to add to to, to bring it uh, to life and there isn't a lot of music in the show all the time right we do have some episodes where we have more but generally it's it's about these atmospheres and so it, you know you don't want it to sit idle and flat so you're always looking for those opportunities and you guys do a great job oh, you're very kind. so Anne, was this a fun one to write Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's your name, man. Oh, <laughs> I always do get a little bit of mm, when I 
when you say your name. I, up yeah, there. I do because too I haven't I been doing this for that long. It's mm. always it never gets old. It never gets old. Wait, when you say ooh, do you mean like a, a thrill, or is it that sense of like, oh no, I'm responsible for what's about to follow? <laughs> <laughs> Mostly a thrill. Good. Mostly yeah. a thrill. Yeah. Dramatic. Oh, well, I think it's a little bit more than that. I want you to come with. And me. How great! I was saying on the other one of the other audio commentators, I have yet. I hate to admit it. Have yet to meet uh, Ann Cusack. <laughs> she, wow. How great is she? She's, oh, she's yeah. wonderful. wonderful. She's always, I mean, she's done such good work for so long. Yeah. And it's always one of the wonderful things now that's happened with TV because the TV has become so strong is that you're getting just the, the level of actors that, you know, you get to play even a part like this who comes in. She's not running forever. She's, you know, but, you know, she's somebody that could certainly have her own show. She's yeah. at that level of talent or lead in a movie or whatever. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But here she is doing a few scenes and, and bringing so much to it and making oh, absolutely. it. And in this scene, uh, you know, it's that she's that deliver of bad news again. An uncomfortable for me, scene for me to watch because I'm 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 sort of cheering. I'm 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 on uh, I'm on Ray and, and Bob's side, right? Kind of, and from the outside in, and then she comes in and sort of just shines a light of truth on them. Right. Yeah. And it really it takes the fizz out of the champagne. It yeah. sours the moment. Yep. It's it's well the put. turd in the salad, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I did not mean to equate Ann Cusack with the turd in the salad. <laughs> <laughs> I take that. She's from Chicago. She will kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> but Jimmy, you're right though. Jimmy's being kind of a kind of a dick here. I mean, it's just uh, it's being kind of a sore loser. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sore, uh, sore, sore the winner. opposite of sore, sore winner. Sore winner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, a graceless winner, whatever yeah. the phrase is. Yeah, I agree. Bob, and, I thought his his work in this scene was so amazing. That's funny because you know when we think of Bob, he's got so much energy, and he's you think of him talking. Right, and yet his silent moments are so strong. Yeah, it's very that powerful. He can do so much just with his eyes. Absolutely, and absolutely, and just the de what what he fe how he feels towards his brother is so so is is, is so obvious there. And yet he delivers it so bloodlessly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you know that's the real mm -hmm. sort of shocking thing. Yeah, but then in those later close-ups, there's just that pain, that that pain behind the eyes, you know, yeah. and that's what he's wonderful at doing. Yes. Is he's got as well. You have this. I mean, all the actors in this have this. Is the ability to be very complex, and the ability to have a surface level, but you keep all the other levels alive. And, and that's what, for me, he did beautifully there, is that it's not just the hatred, it's also the hurt and the loss and the pain and the realization that not having his brother is going to be hard. And, you know, he does all that without saying a word. And I think that's, you know, it's sort of beautiful because you have a show like this where the dialogue's great, but you also have actors then adding sort of their dialogue with their eyes. And kind of those things dance together really well. Absolutely. This scene, I recall filming it was. It was technically very difficult. Yeah, I love very that technically, shot. yeah. I mean, challenging. That, that was something that, again that, that you actually wrote that shot. I yes. mean, that was that was not like just some directorial invention. That was actually in the script. They it was being in the, the middle script. and turning around, but it was just difficult to try to get the camera movement to go all the way, yes. the camera all the way around smoothly. Yes. It was just technically, again, one of the things about TV is you don't have the time to spend hours and hours building things to do it on. So, um, we they pulled it off, but it was challenging. Yeah, you got. Yeah, I mean, you definitely pulled it off. It's great scene. It's great scene. Uh, great scene. Carrie Condon here again. She's oh, such she's a wonderful so actress. Good. I was sorry we didn't have more. With her. I mean, but I felt that. I mean, that about Jonathan. I felt you know when, when you come into a show like this, you can't. You don't get equal time with everybody as a director. Yeah. And you always feel like, no, wait a minute, I didn't get. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't even work with them, and I hardly work with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this is one of the rare episodes where almost everybody is in the show. Yeah, that's true. It's oh, true. Yeah. All our characters pretty much every single episode. major character is in it, so it's, it's really remarkable. So Keith, be honest, because he's never going to hear this. How big a <laughs> how big a pain in the ass is? Oh my God! Is, uh, is Jonathan Banks? Well, I'm, I, my <laughs> eye was swollen for about a month. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just you know, you know, I I've been such a fan. I really was sorry he didn't have more to do because I'm like this. I'm such a fan of his. I mean, I, I could actually go to him and say, look, I was a fan even before Breaking Bad. You know, mm -hmm. like I, you were somebody I've been has been on my radar for like 30 years of like mm -hmm. thinking that guy's a great actor. So I was thrilled just to be able to give him a hug and tell, tell him, you know, tell him that. But I was really sorry just because I, I went, who's that guy? He's got an incredible that's posture. A, that's a, that's yes, a Batman. <laughs> I wish I had posture like that. Yeah, me too. That's some good posture. Uh, you put that on that suit, it gives you posture. That's, <laughs> that's the design. I'm going to go buy one this weekend. It's nice being there at the house at nighttime. 
Yeah, it's 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 well. Well, of course, the interesting thing was, and we had that the conundrum of the interior of the house is is a set. Right. And the exterior of the house is real. And so we had to do some – there was a little bit of figuring out, well, what can we, how much can we cheat? Right. How much can we shoot where? And, and, you know, that's one of those just technical things you have to deal with a lot in film that you just kind of like – things matching, you know, what we're seeing out that window behind you right. and, and what we see when we look in the window. But those are the fun puzzles. I mean, it's all a puzzle. Uh, fun fact, this uh, outdoor scene of me knocking the door is actually on my birthday, December 7th. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because we did one take where I knocked on the door and they opened it up and they gave me a birthday cake. Yep. That's true. Oh, cool. oh, I remember that. <laughs> Pearl Harbor Day? Yeah. Yes. A day of infamy. Wow. <laughs> Patrick Fabian. Oh, relax, Howard. Smile a bit, for God's sakes. <laughs> Life's good. There day you to go. live in. I like it. A day to live in. And the scene between the two of you is... you. Know, Probably my favorite scene in the show. I just think that I love that scene. Me I too. love even Bo- though I'm sitting here, I'm still going to believe you. I, I, you should. <laughs> you should. I mean, I think both of you are so wonderful, and I love the way it's shot, and I love the way it's lit. I was yeah. really happy that you know that we could use the single source the way it did. But the, you know, it's such an interesting scene because you're carrying it all verbally, and Michael's carrying it all in silence, and it's this really interesting. It's kind of like that. What was it? What was the play that? Out of the stronger or something it's a Strindberg place you know, where one character never speaks and the other and sort oh, of that right. balance and like who is the stronger person on the scene and, and just watching really to me it's a ping pong game there's a tennis match going on between the two of you as in the scene and you're both doing it in very different ways you know for any actors out there or performers out there so I'm doing the scene exactly what uh, he was just saying you know McKean's not saying anything and I, I got kind of used to being in scenes with McKean where he sort of had the verbal uh, fireworks and all of a sudden, I got a little nervous. Season three, I'm still nervous. I'm sitting here across from McKean, and all of a sudden, I'm sort of doing the word lifting. And uh, the great thing about him, and like any good actor, you don't ever turn anything off. So he's giving me this this wave of emotion of stuff that's coming out through his eyes. And it's different almost every time in a lot of ways. So he's he's playing tennis with me, right? He's he's seeing how I'm flowing with it as well. And, uh, and I'll say, uh, Keith, directing-wise, I talked to you beforehand to say, like, you know... Uh, I just I got a little nervous about like uh, so I've got this stuff I realize there's importance I can understand script wise this is an important moment an important moment for Howard and 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 Chuck and and so I went to Keith with my nerves basically beforehand and what was great was that Keith was he allowed me to sort of be uh, like the high school actor that I was at that moment going like I don't know if I could do this you know <laughs> and he was just like he's like whatever you do is going to be fine I'm going to be right there and da, da 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 and just basically said what I needed to hear which was just go do what you do so then we did it and after the first take he came in and whether it was true or not and he doesn't have to tell me he did the best thing in the world he said that was wonderful that's perfect um how about, and then he just threw a suggestion into me for the next take and this stuff, but immediately he put me at ease that what I had already done was, was good. We could, we could move on if we had to. And it allowed the scene to open up. And I felt like about maybe six takes into it, all of a sudden there was that moment where you, as a performer, feel the energy really moving. Like it's, it's, you're, you're disconnected and connected all at the same time. You're outside of yourself in a good way. And I finished that take, and McKean, it's the only time he did it in the entire time I've worked with him, we finished, and he goes, nice one, Patrick. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> and I hung that on my Christmas tree all season long. long. Absolutely. Yeah. That'll do, pig. <laughs> That'll do, pig. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Keith, uh, you you were an actor as well as a, obviously you started your career as an actor, which is kind of rare for us uh, in terms of having uh, – directors uh, except for uh, like on Breaking Bad we obviously had uh, Brian Cranston but uh, yeah you you started as an actor I remember yeah. him from Christine yeah Christine mm-hmm. I was, was my thing kid actor yeah I was I started when I was a teen and then but the thing is it's it really came full circle because before that I was one of those pathetic nerds running around with a Super 8 movie camera, which I'm now carbon dating myself. It's like, <laughs> they, 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 they actually the had film, it, it went through the camera, and it, 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 it was physical, you could touch it. <laughs> but that was me. I was like that kid that went around making movies with my friends, and I loved that. And the acting was this fluky thing that just happened, where I got a chance, I was in a school play, somebody saw me, I got a, jo- I got a job, then I got an agent. and But the whole time, I kind of wanted to get back to filmmaking. So... I just have to stop because this shot, I was oh, so happy. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about this shot. <laughs> because these are things that make me, these are the little things that make directing worthwhile. Because in the world that we live in now, a lot of times that could have been done, the battery rolling and coming to a stop would have been a CGI effect. There would have right. been no battery. There right, been, right. 
And I love things that can happen oh, physically. Oh, yeah. yeah. Practical is the and best. And it just, to me, has a magic. And I, every, we were always struggling to make it work just right and getting right. it to stop where the focus would be. And then somebody on the crew, I don't know if it was Marshall, somebody had the genius idea of just putting a little piece of tape. Oh. And just doing it just below frame. Oh. And then we had to do a bunch of takes until yeah, yeah. it happened just right. Yeah. So the battery rolled, and when it hit the tape, it stopped. And it was just so satisfying. And it's sad to think that in another 10 years, this CGI gets ever cheaper. Nobody will ever bother me yeah. that. Everything will just be. <laughs> I, but, I prefer your way, my friend. But right now, I love things that actually happen. I and agree like, completely. We saw that happen. I agree completely. I love, oh, by the way, funny story. We just, two days ago, uh, in our writer's room, we're working away on season four. We got a big box of swag from the Rayovac Corporation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. The nice, nice folks up in Wisconsin at Rayovac headquarters, and they sent us a bunch of flashlights and batteries and stuff. Uh, thanks so much. That's so funny. Yeah. Which Vince, you probably really appreciate it since you have all those. You love flashlights. I love flashlights. You need batteries for lots of your stuff. I do. I need batteries for all my various devices. Exactly. You know, that I. That you build? Yeah. <laughs> This scene was a lot of fun because oh, we yeah. let Bob oh. sort of improvise a little bit on top of the dialogue, which was, you know, we, we always did everything that was written, but then he's so good at playing, and then some of these little reactions, like, you know, when he, when he says, and how did she pass, and that little grimace that he does, oh, yeah. hilarious. were just things that he did, and we just kind of spent the day kind of just doing these things over and over and over again from different angles, and, you know, and he gave us, I mean, there was a lot of great stuff in the writing, and then he gave us more stuff, <laughs> and then there was an editing party, and then that continued to happen after even I was gone. As a director in TV, you get like four days, but it seemed like this, you were never going to have it okay. to this level of, of polish and finish in, in those di days. So it was fun for me when I finally saw the show literally on the air to go, oh, okay. Yeah, Kelly, oh, wow. Kelly yeah. Dixon. Yeah. Kelly Dixon is an amazing editor. Fantastic yeah. editing here. Yeah. And, you know, we had taken it halfway there, but I saw the final version. I was like, oh, there we go. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what I was hoping it would be like. Nobody cuts a montage quite like Kelly. No. <laughs> I think in this episode, there's two, right? This yeah. The second right. episode, there's the second montage too. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, there was one that the other one, then, which is the truck unloading, was a complete yes. reconception too. Because when we shot oh, it, yeah. I shot it as a time lapse. Right. Oh yeah. Which worked okay, but then it's like one of those things, and it is so funny. You know, when you do TV as a director, you do your free days of editing, and you leave, and then it's turned over to everybody else, and the showrunners recut it, and the, and it's really a nice thing when you see the show and you go, yeah, that's better. You know, because you, you do, if you work in television enough, you have those other experiences where you right. see things have been recut and you go, oh, what did they do? Yeah. But it was really fun to see this and go, oh, that's way better. Yeah. I like it way better as dissolves than as, as, as time lapse. So it was kind of a nice, nice surprise. Good. That's a load off because, you know, you want it to be, you want to, you want to only be value added, not mess up. You don't ever want to mess up good work. Well, in that scene too, I think that was Dave's score, right? Yes. Yep. So it was, Call back to Dave's score on that, and that, you know that—that's that last little final piece that you know gets added to it that just changes the whole thing. So it makes it uh, pretty remarkable. So Keith, back to you being an actor. I just want to talk about Rodney Dangerfield and you and back to school <laughs> for like oh. the remainder of the, of the audio commentary. Oh. What was Rodney Dangerfield like? Well, I, you know. He wasn't the happiest guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, he was... You know that whole thing about I don't get no respect and all that? That was... Yeah. I think I think he really felt a lot wow. of that. Wow. I mean, he was a little bit of that Pagliacci clown huh? thing of, of, you know, he's obviously an incredibly funny man. Yeah, yeah. But I think there was a lot of sadness there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, which I always... I mean, I, I always feel like I hope I'm not saying something I shouldn't be saying, but uh, but it it what did seem to be the case that you know he's somebody who'd struggled a lot in his life, and yeah. he's, his success came very late, and he'd been through a lot of hard personal stuff, and you know you felt that you were you know I love the fact this was actually on a soundstage, and you know it's so beautiful the way they turned this into you know the an exterior. We turned it um, and used a little bit of real footage of uh, of uh, the moon in the sky and married the two together. Yeah, wonderfully done. It's really pretty and you know it's one of those things that of course when you're shooting it you can only imagine what it will look like and then it's so nice when you see it and it actually that magic is there. Yeah. 4000 bucks. I took a screenshot on my phone of the TV when it was airing this uh and I sent it to Ray, and I just said, this is what you look like in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds creepy now that I'm repeating yeah, it. So I'm creepy. so sorry about that. <laughs> it would not surprise Ray, though. Um, it, just, it was such a beautiful shot. It evokes, you know, uh, film noir and everything yeah. else. It's just, it's gorgeous.
Nice shot, Keith. Look at that yeah. shot. Yeah. Beautiful well, it's such a theme beautiful. with these two. Like, they're standing against walls. It goes back to the very beginning of the show. It's yeah. kind of in this, 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 there's a physical way that they relate. And that's one of the fun things on a show is that certain things characters do carry through. Yeah. From like in the parking episode. garage. From yeah. the parking garage. Yeah, early on it was always the parking garage. And so as a director, you're always looking at earlier episodes and going, oh, well, how, how do we reference without being bound to those things? Yeah. But how do you keep those things that were a part of these people alive? And so you're constantly sort of finding them going, okay, well, they're standing together. Can we shoot it a little differently? Can we do something a little differently? But still stay true to that world that's been created. So now there's only one. I don't need all this space. I only have one client. It's a huge client. It's also a beautiful set. I mean, that, you know, the choice to build this wall of glass block is like a really good one. Go through all this a lot of what makes something look good is do you have interesting things to point the camera towards and you know something like that gives yeah. you something very very interesting in terms of the way the light behaves and the colors it puts behind them and the darkness outside versus the light inside and you know that that can't exist if the set isn't good Peter Gould and I watched an awful lot of Miami Vice in the 80s. <laughs> glass blocks. More glass blocks. You're not practicing law. Call it Asbury. How cute is she? Okay. And uh, so sweet. Too so sweet. So much and so much fun to work Such with. Such a great actress. You know, oh. very inventive, very. Just, I mean, you know, it's look. The the show is full of actors that have that thing that you want, which is that they're full of ideas. They're full of things they want to try, and at the same time, they're very directable. They're not closed to your ideas, but they're also coming in with their own deep understanding of the character, and they've been working on it for a long time, so they know stuff you can't know. And it makes it fun. Yeah. Except for Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking except for Jonathan, but that's all right. <laughs> Again, he'll never watch this, will he? He'll never watch this. <laughs> which, which, Anne, which of the actors is the one who refuses to have eye contact with anyone? Is that? Uh, yeah, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was just a goofy yeah, joke. No, that's I not know. true. Oh, this we wouldn't was joke fun. if we didn't love her, but. Yeah. We where do you get a rug like that? I was going to say, is that real? <laughs> it that was, was there. there. Oh, wow. It was there. That, I'd and love to give credit to the production design team, but that was this was a real rug warehouse. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> And no, this place we, we I mean they we dressed a little bit of it, but those rows of carpet and the you know, we were looking for this location and we had actually had a different location, we lost it at the very last second. And this is something we had seen when we were scouting. I always loved this because there's something so big and empty about it and to me it bespoke a kind of thing where like, they're getting by but they're not doing well. Right. Um, so we'd been in a much smaller place that looked more like a place you, a normal person would just go to buy rugs, but I love the idea of this thing on the edge of town somewhere there they're just that bowling rug has been sitting there for five years, and you know <laughs> they keep marking it down further and further and further. It's just nothing. They can't it. give it away. Yeah. I love it. These two did a nice job. Perfectly understandable. It's a big financial commitment. Uh, that's why we have our. He's just selling, uh, selling, 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 selling is uh, selling is selling his life depends on it, which it kind of does here. Well, one of the great things about Bob too, he's very aware of not wanting to repeat. So he does, like the character does a lot of selling. And one of the things that we ended up talking a lot about was different energies that could have. Ah. And how much does it need to have a consistency versus how much can each of these be a little different when he's selling. And, and I really like that he was thinking about that. I mean, it's, it's a very important thing over the course of not just an episode, but a year and three years. And, um, and he's very aware of the arc of the character. I mean, he spends a lot of time thinking about what he's done in other scenes and other places and you know is it okay you know he, he questions in a really good way yeah uh, and you need the guy who's carrying that weight uh, of, of so much of the show to do that yeah so when I, if i'm directing and there's a forklift around i just gotta drive it did you did you get that <laughs> i did not drive the forklift you didn't drive the forklift i, I did not I, I i wish i had that now that you've said it though i'm I, i'm filled with regret keith man you're the boss don't miss <laughs> out don't yeah that. we sadly didn't have time for yeah the that forklift. was did you dan did you drive the forklift <laughs> no but i thought about it <laughs> hog the horn <laughs> The deal that the DGA has with the WGA is that the DGA gets to drive the forklift first. But <laughs> yeah, no, we're last <laughs> as <laughs> usual. First time of refusal. Is that a real? Was that sign already yes, there? That's yes, that's a massage. I was there. Yes. Yes. Picked the location. I what love a gift. It. Um, yes. it was so wonderful. And 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 as was the carpet warehouse store with the with the with the letter missing. I mean, those yeah. were all nice. real signs. Oh, I love it. Um, I love how you got the thing sticking out. That was a great I know. touch. <laughs> And 
I love these three. I think they're like this kind of his 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 crew are really terrific. I really enjoy. I mean, as, as again watching the show, I'd always really enjoyed them, um, and it's fun to work with them because they're very they're very eager. They're young. They're excited to be there. They're they're just fun. In order there, it's Josh, Haley, and Julian uh, from left to right. And they are great. They're like the three knuckleheads. That's what I've been trying. Yeah, and they each have a different energy. You know, yeah. It's, they're, yeah. They're very, they're separate, but then they work well together as a They're based on our real film crew. Are they really? No. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought it would be something you'd work with in college. Like, so. Actually, it's pretty amazing. Based on they look like everybody I work with in college. So. <laughs> This is such a great location visually. Uh, yes, yes. It, it, we were so lucky to have this because there was really no second choice. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, this was a local a local TV station and where they broadcast out of. And you know, when we were scouting, there was this and nothing. So <laughs> oh, no. if we could not have had this, I really don't know what we would have done for this. Scene. <laughs> I, want you to nice. those me. Hi, I recall it was very cold. Oh yeah. That day. In fact, I think we ended up having to take out. Some breath. Wow. Uh, I think you're right. Yeah, we were, yeah, we were well December, in December. At this point, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm Jimmy McGill. And it's funny, it's misleading because it's so sunny. You know, you look at it and right. you go, oh, it's warm. And yeah, it was, it was kind of freezing. Sure you can. Albuquerque is a, it's a beautiful land designed to kill you. I mean, it really, <laughs> it's a land of extremes. <laughs> it is. Yeah. A lawyer you can trust, and I can't suddenly turn into commercial guy. I love Haley. She's so funny. Hold on. Uh, Repeat after me. Uh, <laughs> for a limited time, we'll shoot your commercial today. And again, very playful, very... And they were all very... You know, given how young they all are, they're very confident. They're very, you know, they're really into the roles. I love that little... <laughs> yeah, that does. Was, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of maniacal. Yeah. <laughs> you. Go. Say the words. Uh, uh, for a limited... Uh, what I always find fascinating, though, this crew... When they were in the first episode that we had them in was season one, I believe, right? You don't know that you're going to keep bringing them back. And so you keep bringing them back and they keep growing into it yeah. and yes. becoming these regular elements to the show yeah. is really remarkable because it could be a one and done, right? Yeah. But to see them kind of continue to grow in the, in the role How much is really did fun. you know? How much did you know they were going to be part of the story? Oh, not at all. Not yeah, at all. It's just, it, it, Nick is exactly right. I mean, we really liked them, so we wrote, we wrote them in again. And we've had... Luckily, really not that many, and I wouldn't name names. Oh, and this, by the well, way, yeah. completely digitally. Yeah, none of that, <laughs> none of that <laughs> exists in real life. Basically, tell, tell the real that. place yep. for that was back in Breaking Bad that it's imitating it has long since been rebuilt into a very different piece of, of property in a different shape. So we You're ended kidding. up. we yeah. Uh, we ended I didn't up, know that. that was created <laughs> because the real place, which we was going to try right. to use was so different that yeah. it just became impossible to find an angle where you didn't just scream out, oh, that's, it's changed. Yeah. This was very cool. This thing where they, they, they find the, the, the way that they get to the drugs. This is where collaboration is so, the process of making anything on film, TV, whatever, it, it's very collaborative. And we were, you know, there was this idea that we wanted to find something that was going to be believable that had steps to it. Yeah. That wasn't just they took the thing off and it was there. And I don't remember who it was. I, it was like six of us sitting around. I think it was somebody in the art department yes. who finally threw this idea yes. out of the sliding plate that would go back. And, and it was such a great idea. But it's, you know, that's the thing that it's people assume that, oh, this is all, you know, planned way in advance. But we were sitting there going, oh, we need something more. Wow. And it was just a conversation where somebody had an idea, and that idea became a huge part of how this worked, and then what was designed in the building of the set. And yeah. you know, it's 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 a wonderfully collaborative medium that way. Is it? good ideas come from all sorts of people, not even always about their department. Exactly. And then the attention to detail continues. Uh, we want to make sure this could actually work in real life, so we sent Ann Jerkus across the border. With <laughs> <laughs> with oh, thank God I made it back. It worked. <laughs> it worked. I didn't get caught. Word to the right, wise <laughs> drug dealers who are watching this. <laughs> Paul Ann, she knows all the ins and outs. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a connection for you. Exactly. <laughs> Ann Jerkus, drug mule. <laughs> no one would ever suspect me. <laughs> I love the way you shot this, Keith. I love, and it's great seeing Jeremiah and uh, seeing uh, seeing these guys again. Ray and Jeremiah here. You know, yeah, and the, the tension that you that you shoot and write into this is. I've seen a, I've seen so many drug deals in my lifetime on screen, right? <laughs> you, you have, and yet this feels dangerous. Yeah. This feels dangerous yeah. than anything else I've seen. It really, yeah, it really does. Very well done. 
One of the good things about a show like this is there is a sense that anything can happen. You know, there are, there are shows and movies where you just, you know, it's going to be okay. Yeah. And then there are shows where you don't know it's going to be okay. Yeah. And really bad things can happen to really good characters. And that gives you a, that makes the tension believable. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting because we have a little bit of a, uh, L- little bit of a handicap in the case of you know, for instance, uh, Tyrus in the background and uh, uh, and uh, Victor here in the foreground are not going to die in right. the scene because we know they exist in Breaking Bad. But but nonetheless, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, well, it's more know. of a subliminal thing. It's not the literalness of knowing because right, you know, it's like you you know that. Bob's not going to die. You yeah. know that. You know. You know that. I mean, before let's, the show's let's, over, let's not have this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's too close to home. <laughs> My parents don't know they're going to die. I can tell you that. <laughs> but I think the the audience knows that Nacho's on a path. Yeah. Right. And this could be the end of his path. Absolutely. Here. Yeah. yeah. So you, you're right. I mean, well, definitely. any minute here. Yeah. Exactly. That's true. That's right. That's a good point. So the, the tension, especially in this episode, because it's all about Nostro's tension, right? Yeah. So it really. Uh, I love the way he builds out this moment. This little, you just, you know, where you see his fear and you see the little boy underneath it, just, just for a moment. Yeah. And then it's back into darkness, and it, you know, but for one moment you realize he's terrified. Yeah. I was so happy to get to work with Giancarlo. I've loved this guy's work for so long. Isn't he great? And he's the best. sweetest man. I'd never met him. I'd been a fan. And again, you know, I mean, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it kind of was that way on the show. I kept meeting actors who I'd admired for forever and having so much fun with them. And then after like half a day he was done, I was like, no, wait a minute. You can't be done. <laughs> <laughs> and then when people realize where they are. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. No, Just... I was very, look, as a fan of Breaking Bad, it was really exciting <laughs> for me to walk into this location. Me, too. Uh, it was awesome. Me, too. Like, I was like, oh, here it is. Uh, that's awesome. Well, we were lucky because we'd done the sound for both. So that's the, right. The right. Farm and then this. It was like it's fun to bring these elements back yeah. that you, you, you've had for so long. Did so. you add anything new? Change anything? Well, th- it was empty, so that was right. a little big. That right. was a big difference for right. us. Um, but we wanted to definitely get the sense of uh, you. You know, by the time you saw this shot, you knew exactly where you were at. Yeah. So. And, uh, I, and, and I bet you in. added some that that sound of that thing sliding. I mean, was... actually, I think that's production. Well, I really? remember production was yeah. in there, but yeah. you guys didn't add. We do actually to add yeah. another one to it. Uh, this one we had a lot more dripping sounds, and you know, uh, played a little more of the outside ambience of it. Obviously, we never had the gate before, so we, that was something new for us. And um, that little banner, that was and the banner added. that was uh, yeah, yes, and you got to make that flap. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which, of course, that banner was not even really there. That is the effect. effect. No, no, for real? That's 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 Well, we couldn't spring the Kinko's to print a banner? (laughs) No, we had trouble attaching it, I think. Well, it was was extremely windy at that time. And the fear was that anything that we could put up was going to get torn or were pulled away. Look who this That's is. So great. That one line. Is. Yay. Yay. great introduction. Lydia Rudard Quayle. <laughs> so great. Uh, so great seeing her back. She just. That's wonderful. So great seeing Laura Fraser back. Uh, and this, this sequence was this really sequence. fun to film and, and exciting. We, we basically were. The trick of this is that um, we, Albuquerque is not a bright city. I mean, that street we're on is their brightest street, and it's not very bright. The, the neon, all it, it's, it's really pretty dull to the eye. And I knew I wanted it to be this psychotic, you know, mm-hmm. very subjective view of this light crashing in. So uh, Marshall, there's a camera that he'd been using somewhat, sometimes on the show called a Vericam, which Panasonic makes, where you can make, so the first shot like this, where it's so bright, wow. it didn't look anything like this. But we had the camera exposing way way faster than a normal camera can so right. it's 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 soaking the light in and creating this effect and then it was added to in post but that's awesome but yeah. these places you know did not look like this these are all fairly down and, and it was really having that camera and then the wizards in post feeding on top of that and then you guys adding sounds to it but it was really fun because it was scary when I first locations got it I thought oh it doesn't there's nothing here that's got that over bright 42nd street neon craziness right, right. and it was really that camera that, that made a huge difference in giving us a base to work with wow, wonderfully done and I mm-hmm. assume you shoot a test of that before if you yes, get a chance yes we shot all sorts of tests and it was funny because the camera was almost too good. It kept trying to make it look normal. Ah. you know it would it would take the light and brighten it but then flatten it back down again ah, and we okay. had to kind of basically trick it to let it go crazy 
And then Nick, uh, and obviously uh, uh, Dave Porter, our amazing composers, mm -hmm. got some beautiful music going here. And then you're, are you adding in anyth anything underneath when the music's going too, or? For sure. Yeah, we've done, you know, uh, Chuck being exposed to electricity so many times. Right. But this one was really unique because we wanted it to feel a little different than the ones we had done in the past. But definitely, you know, every time he touches the button, we had a little electric zap on the buttons just to, you know, feel his pain. But we wanted him to obviously to survive. So it had to be this more subtle, you know, version of what we had done before. And then, you know, Larry did a great job blending it with Thanks. the music as well. Beautiful, so. beautiful work. Took the five, then one more. What is it? Did he piss himself? Ah, this old bastard. <laughs> <laughs> this is the sweetest guy, Mark Margolis. <laughs> you would never know when he, the, from this character he plays. He is the sweetest guy. That's often true. I, I, you know, I found over the years that people who play villains a lot are often really, really, yeah. really nice, yeah. which is weird. But yeah. it's like they get all the darkness out in the character, yeah. <laughs> and then they're like really happy people. Did you ever play a bad guy, or were you mostly good guys? I'm kind of 50. I mean, Christine was pretty much, you know, went from good to bad. Yeah, that's right. That's um, right. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I, I played, I would tend to go play either like sweet little nerdy guys or really horrifying killers. I mean, I, right. I tended to fall really on one, okay. very far on one side or the other. Would you like better? Oh, I love playing the dark characters yeah, yeah, for the same yeah. reason. Because yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. in real life, I'm, I'm a pretty nice <laughs> and I don't yell and I'm not mean and I'm not so you know the fun of acting is doing something that's different than you yeah, so that makes sense. That getting makes sense. to be just dark and horrible and vicious and it was terrific that you, makes sense to act working out of fantasy yeah what about you Patrick you ever get to play bad guys uh, well, people think I'm playing a bad guy right now. I, see, I, 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 I wasn't being funny. I don't I know. think of him as being a bad guy. No, I, you know, uh, my mother always asks me whenever I, I tell her I book a job. She's like, are you killing someone in this one? Are you selling drugs again? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. You know, I want to talk about Mark for oh, a second yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah. if you go to his IMDb, he's he's an actor's actor. He studied with Stella Adler in the '60s. Him and Jonathan Banks come out of that whole school of, you know, Circle in the Square, New York. He's East Coast up 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 the wazoo, and and he's got some quotes in about what it's like to have been a journeyman actor. He considers himself very much a journeyman, and a success peaks and valleys and peaks and valleys, but. He talks the language of a true uh, artist yeah. of the stage. He loves inhabiting the character. He loves the point of view. He loves the situation. He loves all of that stuff. Yeah. And um, it that's when you realize, uh, as I'm just a little bit younger than him, but uh, not much. And I look at that, and I'm like, right, that's what I want to be. That right. kind of guy that like yeah. finds something and wraps his teeth around it and really, really does something with it. And... Uh, and it's funny. I'm sure he doesn't think this guy is necessarily bad either. He's just providing for his family as well. Right. Yeah. I guess, yeah. I guess even Hitler didn't think he was a bad guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. You extend that logic, uh, sure. <laughs> I love the way... A, a little shot, like a little... It feels like, you know, it's like a little moment where a pill hits... A, I bet you that was tough, that like, close-up on the pill. Oh, yeah, just getting it to land in focus. I mean, that we end up doing I don't know how many times, but, wow. you know, those are those little things. It's funny, what you do have to... What you spend time on on a set is very different than I think people would... Mm -hmm. People would be surprised if exactly. they saw what went quickly and what went slowly. If it was a big movie, you'd have a second unit uh, exactly. director doing all that stuff. Exactly. And they'd have a whole day to get that one shot. Yeah. Because things bounce and you never know. It seems yeah. like every job I ever have, there's something that has to hit the ground and bounce. And, 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 focus. <laughs> and you always look at that scene and go, really? No, no. That's the challenge. Okay. And uh, don't wear stripes because you'll moray. <laughs> Love that little yeah. inside <laughs> filmmaker. Uh, that was a good line, Ann. I like that. It that was, was good. And he delivered it very well. He can occasionally be funny. Yeah. You're on bed tonight. Shiner Bach, hey, we should be getting money from these people. Or a case of beer. Uh, yeah. At least a case of beer. If you're listening, Shiner Bach, <laughs> send us a case of beer, several cases. We're big drinkers. I thought you couldn't sell it. Oh, that's the thing. I'm not. Uh, they pay me to make a commercial. I throw in the yeah, the Rayovac people, after one one little hit, they're sending us batteries. What the fuck? I would, I would send the note yeah, saying that to Yeah, what the fuck this. is with Shinerbach? Shinerbach. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we should work in Ferraris this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be good. How it does drive a Jaguar. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> Not Gimme Jimmy. No, I, I made a new one. I love these uh, posters in the wall. I like old, old uh, cereals. 
Old, this uh, was a new set. This was the first time that, that that's we right. shot in this part of her house. That's right. Yes, I yeah. think that's right. I'm starting to think I might break even. All built, all built on a stage, yeah. Okay. And shooting the commercial was a complete blast because, uh, you know, it's so much fun so much when you fun. get to be intentionally bad. Yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> there's nothing like somebody saying, okay, now be bad at your job in a good way. Yeah. Um, and that was really a fun thing And, of thing course, to do. Bob just oh. nailed it. Hand this it that commercial is so much fun. Yeah. We should talk about it now before we actually yeah, say it. Yeah, it's so short. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty short, yeah. but... But yeah, it was you know there was a thing, and Bob was very into you know again he's very in intense and focused on on this stuff. He's he seems so you know he really wanted to get the right tone and not make it too jokey, make it funny mm -hmm. enough, and he really put thought into it. Yeah, especially something that's humorous. He yeah, really. He, he's not he just takes a lot it. of time. Yes. <laughs> and it's such an important moment too. It's it the is. first time we are where we want to be. Right? <laughs> I love the bullshit uh, goatee. I know. And he's wearing the makeup girl's sunglasses. I love that. Oh, yeah. By the way, so Vince, many nice oh, touches. I've had more than one person say, "Is that supposed to be a Vince Gilligan oh, yeah. <laughs> mustache?" Oh, yeah. right? yeah. oh, I'm serious. Serious. I've had oh. more than one person <laughs> say to me, and I said, <laughs> "No, it's just a coincidence." <laughs> Think of that. That's funny. I love the Polaroid. <laughs> yeah. I love how you got the thing coming out of his head. Yeah. The the it's just not That's quite brilliant. framed That's well. Right. Like it was somebody's idea of a good shot, but it didn't. <laughs> or it was the passive aggressive nature of, uh, of uh, yes. camera guy. Yeah. Right. right. Ray's Beautiful expression done. is priceless. Yeah. <laughs> priceless. Yeah, I love that you guys that, that you ended the episode on such a quiet but powerful note. Me too. I mean, there's something so cool about <laughs> the fact that she doesn't say anything except, huh. I mean, really. I mean, she says the guy's a lot of energy. And then that huh says so much. Mm -hmm. And I think that speaks to your, your trust as a writer in your actors and in the tone of the show that you let her face Tell right. us what. Tell us that moment. Exactly. And that's... exactly. Well, and also Ray is. She can do it. I mean, she can pull it off. And and we had lots of different versions of yes, that. Yes, we did huh. shoot a bunch of different. Yeah. Levels of how disturbed versus how intrigued exactly. versus and how. Exactly. And I really like the one that that was picked. Oh yeah. Because she's not. You don't feel like she's judging. You feel like she's sort of processing. Like what? What, what does this what, mean? What is it? Well, great job, everybody. Keith, yeah. great having you in the family. This was fun. Great job. <laughs> Everybody. Yay. Awesome. Yay. Thank you so much. Everybody. Yay. Thanks for watching. <laughs>